While the Tesla Semi is not the only electric Class 8 truck that's available right now in the United States, honestly, when you do the research, the Tesla Semi does far outshine the EV Semi competition. And honestly, as I was doing this research, it felt a little bit sometimes like comparing a Plaid Model S to say like a Nissan Leaf. I mean, Many times when you compare the Tesla Semi to the competition, it's like a whole other class of vehicle. So let's dive into a comparison of the uh, main electric semis that are available right now in the United States. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. Now I did wanna start this video with a quick note about a recent video that I put out comparing the efficiency of the Tesla Semi to a Ford F-150 and some other half-ton pickup trucks. In that video, I did my calculations based off of the energy stored in a gallon of gas. But since semi-trucks run on diesel and not gasoline, it would have been good if I would have also included a comparison of the energy equivalents of a gallon of diesel and done those calculations. I did wanna say a special thank you to a commenter RC18 in that YouTube video who pointed this out. Now, interestingly enough, when you look up the energy equivalents in kilowatt hours in a gallon of diesel, you actually get various different numbers depending on where you look. For instance, according to fleetowner.com, an article on that website, they say that the energy equivalents of a gallon of diesel is 37.85 kilowatt hours. If you go to Wikipedia, Wikipedia says 37.95 kilowatt hours. And then also I found a couple other conversion sites that claim the conversion rate is 40.7 kilowatt hours per gallon of diesel. So since there is some variation, I went ahead and built a chart using all three of these numbers. And we're going to mainly uh, stick with that first more conservative number, that 37.85 kilowatt hour equivalency. Now in the past video, I came up with a mile per gallon equivalent of 20 for the Tesla Semi as compared to a gallon of gas. However, since there's more energy stored in a gallon of diesel than a gallon of gas, you can see that the mile per gallon equivalent as compared to diesel for the Tesla Semi actually goes up to somewhere around 22 miles per gallon with that more conservative 37.85 kilowatt hour equivalency comparison. That's when you compare the Tesla Semi against the average diesel truck on the road right now and also one of the more uh, efficient trucks, the uh, Freightliner Cascadia Evolution, as I talked about in that past video. Once again, the Tesla Semi actually looks even better than what I presented in the past video. So with that being said, let's go ahead and move into a comparison of the Tesla Semi versus the other electric semis that are available right now in the United States. In the US market, besides the Tesla Semi, there are six other electric semis that can be purchased right now. So obviously, as you can see, there's a huge variance when it comes to the range offered. 500 miles of range is pretty impressive when you compare that to the rest of the competition. And as I talked about in that past video, and as Tesla demonstrated at the semi delivery event, the Tesla semi is able to achieve 500 miles of range fully loaded. Tesla demonstrated that with a 500 mile test run from Fremont all the way to San Diego. And that vehicle was fully loaded. So the Tesla semi can go 500 miles or so fully loaded. And this is something they also state on their website. However, when it comes to the competition, um, they're not very clear. Um, these manufacturers that we just talked about, I couldn't find a stipulation except for one of them um, if this was calculated at full load or not. And several of these manufacturers use the words up to when it comes to their range, which makes me believe that this range is maybe at a half load. Freightliner does give some information on their range calculations and they say in the fine print here when talking about the range of the E Cascadia, it is calculated for typical load profiles in these target applications. So typical loads I think are not a full load. So once again, when the E Cascadia with the tandem drive version offers up to 220 miles of range, I don't think that's 220 miles of range fully loaded. Whereas the Tesla Semi, 500 miles of range is fully loaded. In addition, I found this BYD ATT brochure from a few years ago, and as you can see, they stipulate for the standard range version, which as we'll talk about in a minute, they also offer a long range version, but the standard range version offers 124 miles of range with a full load or 167 miles with a half load. 
Now it is important to know that when we talk about a half load and a full load for the BYD8TT, that number is gonna be a little different than when you compare that to the rest of the semis because their gross combined weight rating for the BYD8TT is listed at 105,000 pounds as compared to 82,000 pounds for the rest of the competition. So while I do believe we need to wait just a little bit until more data comes out for these electric semi trucks before we completely judge this, it does appear like to me that when the real world range numbers come out for these electric semis, that these numbers with a full load will be lower than what we're seeing here on this chart. And this could make the Tesla semi look even better as compared to these electric semis. Now there is something I need to address before we move on to the rest of the comparisons and that comes down to price. When it comes to the price of an average diesel semi, based on my research, you can easily spend $150,000 or more for a diesel semi. Um, but when it comes to an electric semi, that price is probably going to be quite a bit higher. Unfortunately, the manufacturers of each one of these electric semis has been very tight-lipped, but we do have a few details to go on. For instance, Volvo recently put out a press release talking about the total cost of ownership for the average diesel semi versus their electric semi. It appears like the pricing they're showing there is roughly double that of their traditional semi pricing. So at least for the Volvo truck, that truck is probably about twice as much as a comparable diesel truck. Now, when Tesla unveiled the semi back in 2017, they came out with some pricing of around $180,000 being the expected base price for the 500 mile range Tesla semi. However, since 2017, of course, prices have changed considerably and we live in a different world than we did in 2017 when it comes to pricing. So I'm certain that the Tesla semi costs more than that now. How much more? I don't know, but it will be interesting and it will be better to compare pricing once we actually have more hard data to go on. But as it sits right now, I really can't make a judgment call when it comes to pricing for these semis. Okay, let's now move back over to our range comparison, but this time add the layer of efficiency and do an efficiency comparison between these electric semis. As I demonstrated earlier, when you look at the fully loaded range of the Tesla semi versus the competition, it offers a big advantage over the rest of these electric semis. However, we also need to talk about efficiency. As we dive into an efficiency comparison, I've separated these semis out into a long range chart and a short range chart. Starting with the long range chart, while we don't know the exact battery size of the Tesla semi, we do know that it offers an efficiency of 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile per a recent Elon Musk tweet. When you do some simple math, knowing the battery size of these long range semi trucks versus the stated amount of range by each manufacturer, you can see that each one of these electric semis are quite a bit less efficient than the Tesla semi. And once again, these numbers, most of these numbers are likely not fully loaded except for the Tesla semi. When you move over to the shorter range version of these semis, while I do expect that the 300 mile range Tesla semi, I do expect that number to be better than 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile, much in part due to the fact that I expect this semi to be quite a bit lighter than the 500 mile range version. But nonetheless, I've taken a more conservative route here and let's just assume that the 300 mile range semi has the exact same efficiency as the 500 mile range version, which once again is probably not the case. But when you do the math for the shorter range version of these other electric semis, once again, the Tesla semi should be quite a bit more efficient for their shorter range version. I do know there is a place in the market for shorter range electric trucks, and I'm glad that we have these trucks on the market. I'm not saying that they shouldn't exist. I'm just saying when you compare the Tesla Semi, it really looks like the Tesla Semi is the only practical, no compromises, long haul truck option if you are a company looking for an electric semi truck. Now, of course, range is one thing, but charging speed is also very critical when it comes to replacing a diesel semi with an electric semi. So let's now dive into a charging speed comparison from what we know so far. Now I'll talk about this data a little further in a minute, but as you just quickly glance at this chart, based on my research and uh, based on what I was able to find, when you look at how many miles that can be added per minute of charging for the Tesla semi versus the competition, these long range semi trucks, the Tesla semi is in a whole other class of practicality. Of course, we learned at Tesla's delivery event on December 1st, that the Tesla Semi with their new mega chargers should be able to accept one megawatt plus during charging. And based on Tesla's website, the Semi can gain 70% of battery charge in 30 minutes. 
When you do the math, that means you're adding around 11.67 miles per minute of charging during that charging session. Now, for the rest of these trucks, we don't have an exact apples to apples comparison because we're talking about going to 80% on several of these, and then we're also talking about a full charge for the BYD-8TT. But nonetheless, when you do the basic math, you can see that based on this chart, the Volvo VNR Electric is the second best with a very small 2.44 miles of range being added per minute of charging. When you move over to the shorter range electric semi trucks, if you assume that the 300 mile range Tesla semi will also be able to gain 70% in 30 minutes, you can see that based on the calculations for each of these semis, once again, not completely apples to apples because we're talking about some full charges for three of these semis, but for a basic comparison based on what we know so far, the Tesla semi, even the 300 mile range should be in an entire class of its own. So once again, if you're looking for a long haul truck, one that could drive long distances on the highway and stop at a charging station, we'll talk about charging infrastructure here in a minute, but let's just assume that's built out already. If that's already built out and you're looking at these semi trucks, the Tesla semi is the only one that you could actually pull up and uh, take a break, take a legally required break and get enough range to actually get back on the road pretty quickly. A 70% charge in 30 minutes is really not bad at all, especially when you consider such a large battery pack. Now, of course, charging infrastructure is a whole other thing that we need to talk about. And I believe Tesla will be the one to roll out their mega chargers quite quickly as compared to the competition. Tesla has proven that they can roll out a very vast supercharger network pretty quickly. So since Tesla currently has the largest uh, regular charging network in the world for electric vehicles, it makes sense that they'll also have a very robust mega charger network in the future as they sell more electric semis. I believe they're going to build out a very vast, very practical mega charger network that will be as reliable as their current network. Now I'd like to move over to weight and cargo. Now I do understand as people have pointed out in some of my past videos that the average semi truck load is not always fully loaded. However, when it comes to the practicality of a electric semi, I do believe this is something that manufacturers should consider. And it's nice if there's not a weight penalty for an electric semi versus a diesel semi. Now, when it comes to the exact weight of the Tesla Semi, we don't have the exact number for that. However, we do know, as was confirmed in Tesla's Q3 2022 conference call by Zachary Kirkhorn and Elon Musk, that the Tesla Semi, as it sits right now, has no sacrifice to cargo capacity as compared to a comparable diesel Semi. Thus, if you take the average diesel Semi truck, which can often weigh around 20,000 pounds, and you look at the max payload with a flatbed trailer example here, you can see that the max payload for a typical diesel semi might be somewhere around 50,000 pounds to stay at or under that 80,000 pound legal requirement for US roads. The biggest long range Freightliner E Cascadia um, weighs around 21.8 thousand pounds according to Freightliner. And with the extra 2,000 pounds that are allowed for an electric semi truck on US roads, that means that the max payload for that vehicle is also gonna be right there around what a typical diesel semi is. Now, when it comes to the Tesla semi, we of course don't know the weight, but if there is zero weight penalty, it's very possible that Tesla has gotten the weight of the Tesla semi down to somewhere around 22,000 pounds or so. And if that were the case, it would once again offer a max payload pretty close or identical to the typical diesel semi. And that's what Elon Musk and the Tesla team are claiming. If you take a look at the weight for each of these semis, if Tesla is indeed achieving a 500 mile range truck that is as light or lighter than the rest of the competition uh, that has less than 500 miles of range, that of course is going to be a huge differentiator and a huge benefit to the Tesla semi. There is one other thing I want to address and that comes to a comparison of the interior of the Tesla semi to a typical electric semi like the Freightliner E Cascadia. Freightliner has this picture of the interior of their electric truck. And as you can see, it looks fine. It looks very practical, but it looks very typical. However, when you look at the Tesla Semi, you're actually seated in the center of the cabin. You have two nice screens. It's much cleaner. And I assume that the Tesla Semi cabin design is going to be superior to the competition. Do let me know in the comments section below if you'd like me to do a future comparison, maybe diving more into um, 
the features of each one of these electric semis, maybe also diving into battery technology and powertrain technology, let me know below. But at the end of the day, when you take a look at these semis, as it sits right now, the Tesla Semi, as I mentioned earlier, really looks like the only practical, no compromises solution for a long haul electric semi. Do let me know what you think in the comments section below. Well, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. I'd like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.